Hey everybody, it's Dr. McVeary here, and I just want to catch up and do a quick lesson on text-based discussions. Now, we're still talking reading comprehension, and last week we went over the difference between background knowledge and strategy instruction, and we came to the conclusion, you know, whether you're putting all of your emphasis in on increasing background knowledge and vocabulary knowledge or strategy instruction, both rely on two things text-based analysis and text-based discussion. Now, we're not going to do much on the text-based analysis because we have an entire lesson on teaching with text structure. So um, today, I just want to really focus in on different kinds of text-based discussions that you can use in the early elementary classrooms. The goal, though, is to always focus in on the text-based. You know, we talked about the situation where with discussions, you can often hide um, your reading um, or your misunderstanding if you didn't comprehend the text and you just were able to decode it by having discussions. You know, you could be reading a story of, of fishing, but then go off on a tangent about going on a trip with your uncle and you used to be able to catch buckets of snap blues, but you haven't seen any in years. And then just, just like the character, you throw that in there. Your job as a teacher is to hold students accountable for their talk and making sure that they're integrating text-based discussion and, um, and what your evidence from your objectives and uh, going back to the standards that will show growth. So that's really like, where do you, what kind of evidence are you looking for? Well, you're looking for them using the text in the way that the Common Core State Standard grade level expectations say they should by the end of the year. You've taken those grade level expectations, you've broken them down into objectives, and that's the kind of evidence you hope to elicit through your text text-based discussion. You also want to encourage opportunities for strategy exchange. Remember, I, I talked a lot about how it's not so much strategy instruction, but giving readers a toolkit where they can open it up and pull out a tool and saw away, you know, some misconfusion. Uh, and so these text-based discussions give an opportunity for students to um, really get involved. So what do we mean by text-based discussions? Well, the most classic example is the, you know, just the question answer response. That's a QAR. That's a very, very common, you know, discussion technique. Q. Teacher asks a question. Oops, sorry, wrong side. Teacher asks a question. Student answers. Teacher responds. That's very common. Now, you need to have it. So what is something that we often hear? People say, especially in our high stakes assessment lane, but well, you know what? It is a good kind of mega cognitive check. I don't really mind it. TTQA, turn the question around. So if it, you know, if it says summarize the three main details of um, of the text you read on the life cycle of a frog, um, you know, well, it would probably be a stages, but I'm just trying to come up with informational text and saying like the little engine it could, but so just going with that, then I would say the three events, the major events in a frog's life cycle are one, two, three. I would probably use four, but you know, we're just pretending for a little bit. But by turning that question around, you're forcing the students to root their evidence in the text. Um, so you will hear that a lot, TTQA. So really, you know, we want to get past just the QAR. Because you need students interrogating the text. You need them pulling it apart. So what we're going to do today is talk a lot about different kinds of discussion techniques. Well, we already know about reciprocal teaching, right? And with reciprocal teaching, you had, you know, you might have a small group of students, teacher, student, 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 and you assign this one, one of those skills, like this one um, is working on their questions. This one is working on clarifying words. Um, this one could be working on um, summarizing. And really, they should be bouncing it back and forth between the students and the teachers, hoping that the majority of the talk, you know, that's the key. You want, if you were to do a percentage, you want the percentage of talk to be more on the students and not the teacher. Then when you do a percentage of that student talk, 
you want a vast majority of it being based on actual textual evidence using details from the text. So that's kind of where simple teaching with those four models. And we talked about how Palin, Starr, and Brown, you know, really kicked that off in 1984, which brought in a lot of um, a lot of Vygotsky and uh, metacognition from 1978, and then also um, Piaget and informational uh, processes in theory. And that was all coming together this idea of strategy and structure. So, but beyond reciprocal teaching, you know, we can also think about the snowball method. So what does that mean? So here's a snowball method. I could ask a question to one person. They ask it to two people. Those two people, and then you keep growing the circle until your entire class is discussing the same question. You can start off in pairs in a snowball, then have the pairs meet, then have the quads meet, and keep growing. And, and the goal is, you know, to go from a single small group instruction to an overall instruction. And that's one method that's called the snowball method of discussion techniques that you can use. Um, another one that I love is a gallery walk. Like, so say this is your classroom. You might put a passage here, some images here, some historical source documents here, some poetry over here, and you have students walk around like it's in a gallery at a museum. And they can walk, and then you, have, you put a poster board or something that they either write on. So here is a poster board, chart paper, whatever. They can put post-it notes or write. And this gets them, because then they get to see each other's work as kind of a mentor text and model, but they have the actual source document that they're pulling their evidence from here. And as the groups are walking around, you know, as our little people are walking around and checking out the artifacts, they'll be having their text-based discussions. And so you, as a teacher, you can informally assess their text-based discussions as they're walking around. You also get evidence here about their use of evidence um, responding to a text. Because that's, remember, we can never know what somebody truly understands in reading comprehension. We're measuring the residue of their learning. They have to do something with what they read. And that's why we have to be careful when we assign like really long essays as comprehension measures, because now you might be not assessing their text-based discussion skills, but really just their writing skills. So you cannot just look at artifacts when trying to assess text-based discussions. You have to use formative and summative assessments in a variety of um, informal settings to capture those text-based uh, discussions. Another great is example, and this one is a lot, um, now there's, you get assigned a piece called what's wrong with these, these literature circles, but a literature circle or a book club, I'm gonna put those together. But again, you might have four students. In a literature circle, you often get you know, the same kind of roles that we had in uh, reciprocal teaching. This might be the questioner. You know, and this might be the uh, clarifier who checks on our unknown words. Uh, this might be the summarizer who just writes a quick gist statement. Um, but you gotta be careful because sometimes, because there's a lot of um, literature circle, like books that come with these worksheets that are supposed to be scaffold for student learning. But instead of text-based discussions, you end up with four students quietly doing a worksheet and then sharing their work product afterwards. And that's not what the literature circle is supposed to be. You know, they, they're supposed to have their questions ready during the, the conversations, and they might want to open up with a summary. So you do have to be careful with the literature circles kind of evolving into worksheet time, um, especially with all of the work products that are available in the marketplace. Uh, so we have a a lot of you know examples there. The uh, another one is the like the social barometer is you know like that's kind of like a 
how do you feel? So if you, it's or, you, it's kind of like four corners is another way that some people call it. You know, you might put like agree here, disagree, um, strongly agree. Or, well, either way, you get the point. And then uh, strongly disagree. I might move those around a little bit. And what you do is you want to have open-ended discussion po points about the text that you're reading, or hopefully multiple texts if we're talking informational text. And then the students, you know, as you read off the prompt, they move around the room and group together. And you, as the teacher, then can ask people to explain why they have a position. Then you might go to the other side and have them rebut. So, but you as a teacher, your goal is to always make sure that they're driving into text-based discussions. And these are just a couple examples of um, different ideas. You can do things like think pair shares, um, talk moves, accountable talk is a way to assess, um, Socratic circles, where you put, you know, where you have two discussion groups going in a way. You have, a, you know, you have a circle of one group of students and you have an outside circle. And then these people have a discussion and then these outside people kind of evaluate that discussion, which is a great way to get evidence of, you know, they can then, you know, how do you, what's a great way to learn how to use text-based discussions? Evaluate your peers using text-based discussions. Um, and that's really what we're going to go to next in our next video is how we unpack the Common Core State Standards to understand, you know, what we what evidence we should be looking for when we are having our students do text based discussions and that will help us as we get ready to write our first lesson plan. Thanks all.